Hi, uh, this is Reed Gray, the old Robo Hippie, back at you again. I wanted to do a little talking about one of my favorite tools. Um, this is a Doug Thompson fluteless gouge. Um, the only financial considerations I have with Doug is he seems to get quite a bit of my toy money. Um, I originally got one of these just because I was looking for one of those bottom of the bowl tools. Um, this is excellent for that, but I found the more that I use this, the more uses that I find for it wonderful tool. You can do all sorts of things with it and I think most people just don't really know how to use them. This has a rather blunt sweep to it. Not very much sweep. doesn't curve very much around to the sides. This is pretty much the way it came from the factory. And if you notice the bevel angle on there, that is about 70 degrees. I think they come at 60 degrees, but I have all my scrapers sharpened at 70, so I just keep the platform at that one setting. And if you notice here too, I've also relieved the bevel or ground off the heel of it. That just makes it better for going through concave surfaces and going through the transition area and across the bottom of the bowl. Now the fluteless gouge has very little sweep to the nose. And what this allows it to do is you can go to the right or to the left with the same tool. It doesn't make any difference. I thought this was a brand new tool and apparently it's been around for a very long time. There are a couple of tools on the market that are similar to it. Uh, one of them is a Tracy Owens finishing tool. I think he's a British turner. Craft Supplies carries that particular product. Um, his are a little bit bigger round in stock. Tracy has a right handed one and a left handed one so kind of like the skew chisel. The nose is angled one side or the other so for going left or going to the right. Since they're round stock you can't reverse the tool. And Tracy's round nose version is more like this typical scraper here. Um, it is swept back considerably more on the sides. Okay, these fluteless gouges are made out of half round bar stock. So kind of like half of a gouge. Nice and sturdy. Another similar tool is called the Scutcha gouge. So basically it is round bar stock and they grind a flat on this surface here and the bevel angle is around 45 degrees and I would consider that to be more of a finishing tool or for making cuts on spindles not so much a heavy duty bowl tool. This is another similar type tool. This is a Sorby Spindle Master. If you notice this is not a half round bar stock. It's a much smaller section and with this steep bevel on here, this is definitely intended more for detail work or spindle type work rather than working on bowls. Now neither this or the Tracy Owens tools are roughing tools. They do look kind of similar to scrapers, um, but I would not use them as a scraper. Primary thing with using any tool, you want it to be balanced on the tool rest when you're cutting, which means the part of the tool that is cutting is directly over the tool rest. So for balanced, if you figure this is a section of the half round flute, this is balanced, just like that. So if you're cutting with a center, fine, it'll stay balanced, but if you're trying to use that as a scraper and you're cutting on one edge, it's going to want to tip on you. So when cutting with this, I keep it at a 45 or higher degree angle, like this, and just like when you're using a skew chisel, this is your center line. You always cut below the center line. If you get up on top or above the center line, again, it's going to want to tip on you. So always keep it up at an angle. So again, when I'm cutting with it, I do not keep it flat on the tool rest. This is for great for shear cuts. I keep it rolled up on its edge, and I'm working with the lower part of the blade here, not the upper part. That keeps it balanced, and it gives you a very nice shear cut. Now this is another tool remotely related. This is called the Big Ugly tool. I can't really call this the Big Ugly because I actually have a wood handle on it where the traditional version had cutters on both ends. But this has a flat surface on the bottom. So you can use this as a scraper. And I do have the edges rounded a little bit so I can roll it up on the edge. And I can make some of the same cuts with this that I can with the fluteless gouge. This cutter here, the metal on the top, this is a piece of tan tongue. It is a cast metal. It is almost as hard as carbide. Stellite is another metal that works. Um, it is brazed or silver soldered onto there. Very good cutting edge. One other thing I do to make sure I'm working on the lower half of the blade too when I'm using this rather than holding the tool level, 
I tend to drop the handle a little bit so that'll keep me on the lower part and makes it impossible to get on that upper part. And so now I'm going to show you a couple of uses or ways to use this on both bowls and on spindles. So this is one of the uses. Uh, the wood I'm demonstrating today with is called choke cherry. Uh, this stuff is particularly stringy and difficult to get a clean cut on. I use a recess. Uh, this is how I clean out the recess so I have minimal sanding to do. Okay, this has been roughed out with a dovetail scraper and as I said this wood is very stringy. So now to clean it up, high shear angle, steep angle, it makes it cut a little bit cleaner. Cut this way, cut back that way. Got rid of most of the tear out there, come back the other direction, up to the edge. So now I have to get rid of all these fuzzies and that will be a plunge cut down the edge of the dovetail. Now this is one of the fluteless gouges where I've got it sharpened to more of a spindle gouge or detail type gouge point on it. It's great for making a plunge cut like this. Rub the bevel on the inside of the cut just till it starts cutting then come back to the top plunge straight in I'll take one little pass just to get rid of this part those fine little wispy shavings that means you're getting a good clean cut that can be sanded with 220 no problem so I'm going to clean up the rim of the bowl first I can push cut or pull cut either way works handle is dropped I'll pull it first a real high shear angle nice little wispy shavings But even with this real fuzzy wood, the stuff that likes to tear and rip rather than cut, that gives you a real nice surface. Now this is the purpose that I originally bought this tool for, which is going down the sides, getting through the transition, and going across the bottom. And you need a steep bevel like this in order to be able to do that. I have found it almost totally impossible to start a cut on the rim. I can do that with a standard bowl gouge. I can't do that with this one down inside once you've got some surface that you can actually rub the bevel on then it works pretty easily and again you're not going to take off massive amounts of wood and if you look these are not wide shavings this is not a heavy stock removal. This is just finished cuts. It's now going across the bottom. You can see how rough that is in there right now.
and other than small tool marks, that's a nice clean surface. The main advantage with most of your gouges, you can get them at about a 45 degree shear angle. With this, you can get this up to 70, 80 degrees shear angle. Okay. If you're using a scraper, this has absolutely no shear to it, which is why it tends to leave a much rougher surface. Okay. Now you can see this little white line here. That is an area that does need to be sanded out or cut out. I would much rather cut it out. This makes a very good tool on the inside of a bowl for a sheer scrape so it is a not bevel rubbing cup and you're pulling up towards the rim. So that will clean that up. So not rubbing the bevel. Just a sheer scrape. Working on the lower one third or one half of the tool. Now that little white mark is gone and it's ready to sand. Starting from the outside, high shear angle. This is a bevel rubbing cut. So that leaves a nice clean surface. I'll show you a shear scrape on this part here. So I will not be rubbing the bevel, I will have it pulled over more towards the side. And again, a really nice clean surface. So that's pretty much basically what you can do with these on bowls, which is all pretty standard. You can do the things with gouges too, but I just like this flutless gouge better again because you can roll this up to a really high shear angle like that. It just makes the wood come off a lot easier with a lot less stress, a lot less pull. So this is a fish whacker, a bonker, a carver's mallet, a potato masher, or sauerkraut pounder. I found out these work very well on spindle grain orientation. One of the things that I have no idea why it works, you cannot do this one with a skew. You cannot start to cut on the edge and go in. You always have to go off. And I am guessing that has more to do with the blunt angle on it. I am no spindle turner, so I am kind of sloppy this way. This is great for making coves. So go down over the edge, just roll the handle with it. Coming from the other side. Makes it easy to clean up the line. And so again, going down here, starting from the square edge. But for me as a bowl turner, I find this far more user friendly than the skew chisel. With the skew chisel, you know that as soon as you come off the bevel, it digs in and it runs and you get this nice little spiral groove there. With the fluteless gouge, it doesn't do that. I have no idea why. Let's move it off a little bit first. This is a bevel rubbing cut. So, nice smooth surface. And now when I come off the bevel, it does go back a little bit, but not very much. It doesn't dig in and run as seriously as a skew chisel does. I have no idea why, but I just really like this feature about it. So for spindles, these do work nicely for beads and coves. 
probably a little bit easier for me to do the coves. Start at the top. So it cuts. And my work is not exemplary here because I am a full turn. It still gets the job done. This is another variation on it. Um, I use this for my recesses. The first time I ever saw this one used was in the hands of Alan Batty, uh, who I am not worthy to emulate. But I used it under his instructions and guidance and found it to be a wonderful tool again for the beads and coves. So just like a spindle gouge or detail gouge, roll it till it starts cutting. The thing with it when you use like this, this basically has a little bit more steel to it than your gouges, so it's going to be a little bit more sturdy. My bead and cove abilities are not very good. I can kind of fake it, but you get the idea of what this tool can be used for that way. See, this bowl blank has more of an OG type pattern, which is concave. Because you have a steep bevel and a short one, this is excellent for coming through there and getting a finished cut. Much easier to do it with one of these than it is with your standard bowl gouge. Again, it's that short, steep bevel angle and the high shear cut that gives you that real nice cut there. Another use I found for the fluteless gouges, I turn boxes. This one's oversized so we can actually see what's going on here, but you always end up with this funny little nipple in the center which is difficult to get out. One way is you can keep your scraper or cutting tool flat, move up and down side to side and kind of get it. Or for me with this tool, I'll take it, put it at about a 45, and do pull cuts. So the handle is dropped slightly, 45 degree angle. And you can take this as a pull cut, shear scrape all the way up the side of the box. I use this inside short hollow forms as well. That just makes it easy to get down in there and get that last little bit out. That little thing there will sand out no problem. Okay, for sharpening purposes, I've found that generally this works better with a burr on it. Um, I do use the CBN grinding wheels, and that leaves a far better burr than your aluminum oxide wheels. I've honed the burr off, I've honed the burr on, I've burnished a burr on it. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But generally, so there's very little sweep to it, which means there's not much movement this way. So set the platform to 70 degrees, rest it flat on the platform like this. It doesn't roll too much, you can keep it steady fairly easily. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, okay. As part of my slowing the wheels down, I can let them spin, but these are a lot heavier, so they're going to spin longer. I rub the heel on it like that to grind it off. That just gives you a short bevel here to work with. Uh, makes it much easier to get through concave surfaces like your transition area on the bottom of a bowl. If you want to burnish 
a burr on it. It's not too difficult. I use one of these little triangle tools like this rather than the round ones. It works a little bit better. You want to have this just barely off the, the bevel angle. You don't want to crank clear over like that. If you do that, it turns a burr all the way over and then you can't cut with it. But just a few light passes, that's all it takes. Lee Valley and Veritas Tools does make a burnisher for scrapers. Um, I haven't found that I need it, and you don't really need a lot of pressure to turn a burr on this.